Um, we need to make a marketing video because I don't have. Yeah. I have toast on me. Yeah. I was just eating toast while I was on the. Mic. <laughs> I don't have time to write everything up this week like I had hoped about our floral free testing. So we need to make a quick video. Okay, we're really good at that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what should we talk about? I don't know. You've been spearheading the, the testing. So. Actually, Noah's been spearheading the testing, but he's not here. I was going to do this with him. Okay. So you're sort of... I'm Noah's felon. Right. <laughs> exactly. Good. You're sort of yeah, a felon. Um, so this stuff, the Star NF paraffin is our testing basis. That's what we've been starting with for several years. We've had really good luck with high school teams that are racing floral free. Uh, the star product has this nano ceramic additive that they've been using for quite a number of years now. It's what makes it look a little bit milky instead of just clear, but it's not floral. It's this ceramic that has been really good. I think it's a uh, a real benefit for Star. They know how to use it. The first round of nano ceramic stuff that came out was pretty limited, but in the later generations, it's been good. I think Davida really knows what he's doing with that product. So our goal all along has been to sort of use that as a reference and try to beat it. So far this year, it hasn't won a test because the new stuff's better. Okay, like what? like this. This is more or less the same stuff. It's labeled next. It's got a big next label on it. You see next? I showed the camera. What's different about that? Uh, more additive. I don't know. More nano ceramic, maybe other stuff. He doesn't exactly tell us. He just says, try this. This is, this I think represents the highest level of additive content that he has really 100% confidence in, not just like an idea, something that he knows will be fast. And in every test, it's been better than the regular NF. Um, the Polar version, there's four of these, Polar, which is like the old NF8. Mm -hmm. The Cold is like the six. The Med is like the four. And the Warm is like the two. Um, the Polar was the outright winner for us to weekend before last in Crashbury when it was very cold. That, that wax was really good, particularly under pressure. Glide out was good, but under pressure when you're pushing on the ski for skating, it was really good. Uh, these have just been good. They've, they've performed highly and well in every test and have always been better than the reference. So I feel like they're very safe and they're uh, incremental step up. Davida was concerned that they wouldn't be all that different from this stuff. And they're not all, it's not like a different class of wax, but it's been very good. So those are, those are exciting for us. And then how does that compare to the liquids? Really good question. The liquids are more or less the same as this. They're, uh, I believe, an enhanced additive content in a fluid dispersion. It's the same delivery mechanism we've been using with the Star HF liquids in the past years, just isopropyl alcohol. I really like the alcohol because it evaporates really rapidly and the ski is fast within minutes and there's not a lot of complication. Um, it leaves a pretty dry film. Uh, I feel like the waxes tend to run a little colder than the same rain, the same chemistry when it's ironed. Um, it tends to have a little of that glassy feeling. These waxes have won a lot of our tests and or always been very competitive when they're not winning. Uh, we haven't run the warm one. There's three of these, the cold, the medium, and the warm. Cold and medium, we've tested a lot and have had a lot of success with. The warm has not been in the tests because We've been testing a lot of prototype additives that Davida has sent us, and they're all set up in the warm chemistry. So when we're testing additives, we want to test against similar hardnesses and similar paraffin bases. How are you applying those other than spraying it on, letting it dry? Are you ironing? Are you so we've tested everything. With the HFs, almost always running the iron over it seems to make it better. With these, you can run the iron over it just the same way. 
I don't feel like it's making it a lot better. We haven't done really extensive durability testing. Like for the Crashberry Marathon this weekend, if this stuff wins, I'm going to want to iron it for durability. The wax works well with the iron. There's a lot of wax in the wax. You know, there's a lot of wax material in suspension in the fluid. So when it goes on the ski, there's a sufficient quantity. It's worth noting that this we have in both the sponge applicator, which you just plunge and sponge on, and then the spray applicator. The spray applicator probably puts a higher concentration of material on the ski. There's a little overspray. You have to spread it with your fingers, which isn't a big deal because it's just isopropyl alcohol. But uh, I like the spray for ironing because it leaves a little more volume on the ski. The sponge is really economical and a really good way to just spread it very consistently. Incidentally, Wayne Johansson just pointed out to me that the spray is better for working with skins. Like if you want to treat skins with the liquid, it's nice to have the spray. Yeah. Um, cause you get a little more volume and you can kind of feel it and work it in. But these have been good, really high performing, um, and, uh, quite, quite reliably good. So I, I feel safe with, with the star stuff. We've got a lot of testing on it and it's good. Some of the prototype additive products that he has sent us have been another step, but also the ranges might be a little smaller, like some of the crazy wet ones seem like they're really crystal shape dependent. And so we have some work to do to figure out what the product line will be. But I think there will be another step by next season. For now, I appreciate that he's really focused on what he knows and trusts and is putting out products that are reliable, like really good. And then how, how are the Rex ones? These are both sprays. Yeah. So there are things I love about these and things I don't love about these. One of the things I don't love is the carrying agent. They're aerosol, they're pressurized, and it feels and smells like, it's, like there's butane carrying them. If you read the hazard stuff, butane is no more hazardous than isopropyl alcohol, but it sure smells bad. You know, you do a lot of this stuff in a room and the room gets really heavy. It's not that nice. Um, the other complication with these is that we found really variable performance based on how much drying time the skis have. Like they've been good when we get it on the night before, but that doesn't help us if we're testing at a race and we need to make the skis really quickly. Early season, the 41, which is a really hard transform snow product, seemed like it had a couple good tests and a couple bad tests. And then somewhere it was really good for a kilometer and then fading. And I don't know how much of that was application. There was one day when it just felt like this stuff was clogging up. And every time we rebrushed the skis, they were good. But we had to brush them like once a lap up in Craftberry. It was weird. So I'm, I'm not 100% I'm not sold on this. But I know some people have had great luck. Like I've had reports from other skiers who are like, it's beating the fluoros. Anytime someone tells you this stuff is beating the fluoros, there's something else happening. But um, so this is still very much we're testing it. The 21, I think, has been much more reliable, and especially after the last snowfall, it started winning tests. Previously, it wasn't. The, what's super interesting is the last real snowstorm we had, which is over a week ago now, um, was about six inches of snow. And since then, the Rex 21 has been really good, and the Rex kick waxes have been really good. They've just done, done really well on the, on the most recent snow. I feel like the star is more even and consistent maybe, uh, but we've definitely had the, this beat the star in some tests most recently. Um, but then, well, yeah, 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 that's true. The, in the most recent test that we ran prior to last weekend, the star, some of the prototype star paraffins were a little better than, than this, but, um, but this was a little better than the liquid. This one, the liquid test. So, uh, very interesting wax. Get it on early, like as early as you can, if that's going to be your call. That's the only hesitation I have is it, it limits our ability to work close to the race. Mm -hmm. um, so, if we're if we're on race morning, I'm probably reaching for that. There, there's that. And then we just got. Some Valky and getting a bunch more hopefully before the weekend. Yeah, this stuff's this pretty stuff. exciting. It's exciting. It's been, um, they have marketed the hell out of this stuff. They, Valky has made really 
high promises with this. They have talked, they've patented the additives, which are zinc stearate, or what the chemists call zinc soap, and silicone, which is a whole class of stuff. And so there's, there might, there's presumably something proprietary in there, but as additives, those have been around the ski world a long time. It's not as though that's, that in itself is totally unique. But they, they have a patent pending on, on the additive. They have released a whole line and offered them as kind of one-for-one -one replacements of their floral products from the UF level on down. They're not proposing a replacement for pure florals, but... I thought they were. No. They have some powdered stuff, kind of like this. Mm -hmm. um, we have some prototype okay. containers over there of the race line. This is the pro line, which they're saying is comparable to... I don't even remember. Something really Wait. highly fluorinated. Can you... Hold on. Just let me yeah. get that valve. Amy's getting the valve thing. I have this whole thing. Oh yeah, you have a whole thing. I thought the pure race was the replacement on that level. Where's the pictures? Oh, uh, so what they've got here, they're comparing the uh, the pure race to their HF, you know, their uh, RC speed. We've never even had the RC speed. Yeah, this but is more liquid paraffin. Oh, it is. It's not pure floral. It's, uh, I see. It is refined floral chemistry in suspension with liquid paraffin. It almost feels like they're just floating powder in the, in the liquid. I don't know exactly how it works. I'm sure it's more refined than that, um, but it's still a paraffin base. It's okay. not, a, not a pure floral, okay. but it's expensive. Now, it's worth noting also that they, they've placed this stuff at a very high price point. So this is $72, I think. What is that? This is uh, Pro. 78 and 82 for the LDR. But that's this. This is 78, and the liquid, Pure Pro liquid, is 74. 74, 78 in the solid form. Um, compared with 20, One. and this is somewhere in that. Somewhere in that region. Okay, and this is 28. Um, so like, definitely different price points, and I think a lot of this has to do with how they're presenting and offering the line. I mean, let's keep in mind that uh, the material cost is a big component of the cost of wax, but a huge component of the cost of wax is research and development. I mean, when I first saw like cost-based pricing on some of the potential race products for Star, I asked Davida, like, can you make a living on that? And he goes, no, probably not. And I said, well, how about you build your living into the pricing? <laughs> like, if you're developing this stuff and you have a factory and everything else, someone's got to put groceries on your table. So if you're making race product, let's call it race product. And it takes work to make race product. It's like our grinds. It costs us, if we're batching out skis and we're putting 100 pairs of skis over the same stone, the material cost per grind is very small. But we got to pay for a grinder, we got to pay for space, we got to pay for labor, we got to pay for the development, all of that stuff, which means that, in fact, the cost is high. And I think we all have to face that some of that's happening in the wax industry. But it also means that there's no direct index and no one really knows what the pricing is going to end up being. What they do know is what the price tolerance of the market is. I think Vouty is testing the price tolerance of the market. <laughs> and I think everything's going to probably even out. And as we see, newer packaging from other brands, I bet I bet we'll see the pricing come up. All these wax companies need to find a way to make a living. They're going to work just as hard. They're going to deliver this equivalent advantage in a floral-free world that they ever did. But everyone's based their pricing on that little floral tag in the past, and so it's, it's really all over the map right now. This stuff's expensive. The promises are very high. We haven't had really any controlled test of it. We, we, it was on a pair of skis. In the most recent test, conditions were... Noah wasn't excited. The conditions were crappy, and it was hard to really be confident in the testing. And it, it did fine. It didn't win, but it was good. And it was a blind test. He didn't know what it was on, and it was just a day. He came back shaking his head and was like, well, here's what won, but mm -hmm. what did that mean? So we'll be testing it this week for the marathon, for sure. We'll have it there and we'll be testing it. Um, basically, like everything here, we sort of need people to join us in testing. It's not, it's not like we have uh, all the answers. Um, and then 
Yeah. Ula. Ula is, this is interesting. I'm gonna put all this stuff over here because this, these are what I would consider conventional solutions. Vauti, for example, is really proposing this sort of one for one, category by category, as replacements for their fluorinated waxes to be worked with in a very similar way, layered up and everything else. They have a, a, a pure pro base wax liquid, you know? So, okay, maybe we need to try a base wax. It's, it's really being put out there in a very conventional way. The Ula stuff is different. You remember Claude from when we lived in Canada, Claude Prika, he's a good friend. He's absolutely insane, totally crazy. He's like a mad genius who also um, is like so involved that you can't figure out whether he's selling a lot of crap or something real. So you have to test it. <laughs> We've been testing it. We started last year. Um, Last year it was kind of offered as like, hey, this can be as good as floral sometimes. This, you can use this instead of floral. And it, he wasn't exactly saying it was as good as floral, but that like, please test this. This year, all of a sudden, when we look at the prospect of removing floral, it becomes a lot more interesting. The problem with this stuff, I pulled out a couple of these as samples. Um, we've got like, we've got a dozen of these different, different waxes. There are these little, these little pucks and you run the roto tool over them to load it up and then you put it on the ski and the first thought i had was like that's not doing anything so it took me a while to even believe it was working at all and it is in fact it's, it's putting wax on the ski and the wax lasts so conceivably these have to be different they're dedicated okay yeah yeah so they've got two sides one side like this one is for the pink and we run the pink there and i haven't run the pink black yet so there's a black version of the pink and that will go there um, but yeah, there's a different tool for each one. The tools are super well made. This is wool. This is the roller. Uh, they're very well made, but they're also expensive. So the starting cost is high. Um, the wax is expensive, but very economical once you're into the game. What I keep finding is that this is not a whole different class from this, but it is also the only product that we've put on snow and actually had compete with florals. So we ran that test up in, uh, at Quarry Road yeah. in Waterville, where I put out one of these, and it wasn't the one I would have picked. I, I actually texted Claude and was like, these are the conditions. He's like, have you tried the black? Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't because it's too whatever it was. And he mm -hmm. said, just try it. So I, we had already finished our paraffin testing, so I was like, heck, we'll put it into the fluoro test. I tossed it into the fluoro test, and Noah came back, and he's like, this ski. And I was like, Go try again. <laughs> I don't believe you. Try again. And he came back and he said, no, it's good. Um, we put you on it and you already knew what it was. And you definitely said at really high speed, maybe not as good as the fluoro. On the downhill. On the downhill. You could tell. The you could difference. tell. Okay. Um, on the flat tip, well, it was really free. Yeah. You know, so it, it definitely, it offers performance at a, at a high level. That was a, definitely a fluoro day. It's, um, I think it's got the potential to be really good. What I keep seeing is that teams that adopt it and work with it are super happy. They find their way to good skis. When we work with it and we test ULA against ULA, we find good solutions. But often it's taking a bunch of tests. The products seem to react not just in terms of like temperatures. Like, you know, the, these are clearly marked with snow temperatures and the guidelines are pretty good and they're fairly crystal type independent and they don't really care so much whether there's sun out or clouds or what the changing temperature is or, or anything else. Uh, these, the ULA waxes seem to be more responsive to structural changes in the snow, the solar effect, kind of what's happening, you know, the amount of pollution in the snow. They're sensitive to a different set of criteria. And so plugging these into this system is not automatic. It's not like you can just pick the right one of these things and throw it in a test. And when we do that, they often don't do very well. But when we focus on these, I find like, I find that we come up with good solutions. How do you keep this wool from getting contaminated? You know, so you know that you're putting on what you think you're trying to put on. Yeah, so uh, they make a pretty good, a very good cleaner okay. that we're using to clean the skis prior to applying them. The skis that have been treated with a lot of fluoro, you know, if we're taking a, a ski that has had a lot of fluoro on it, and then putting the Ola directly on, they tend to turn the wool a bit black. Um, 
also, if you overload this stuff, if you try to put too much on, it gets smeary and it's, the application fails. Um, so there's a little practice that goes into using this. You want to really focus on light applications, but you can layer up. You want to sort of dry film out of this stuff. You don't want to get a really smeary, waxy thing, and you can definitely do that. Um, it's interesting. I, uh, I've talked with a bunch of waxers who, well, teams that have adopted it and are making good skis are really happy. Uh, the Orford team, this guy Gilles, who's been working with it for a couple years, um, I saw him this weekend and he was telling me what they were testing and, um, you know, they're making good skis and putting people in the races. Uh, Steve Vosberg in the New Hampshire High School Series has just been loving it, um, making really good skis. Um, I, you know, I talked with one Super Tour waxer this weekend who was just like, that's a fantastic solution for high schools. You know, like, if you buy into the solution, it works great. If you just mm -hmm. use the system, you can find your way and, and you have good, good success. I still feel like it's hard to integrate with other systems. And so we're kind of keeping them a little bit separate. And, you know, for this weekend, for example, when we go up Friday to test for the marathon, I'm going to put all this in a test and run it in one test. And then what I want to do is run another separate test and try to find the right solution for Mula. And I don't, I'm not great at knowing what that's going to be in advance. But then once, once we get this solution and once we find that solution, we can start working those against each other and see how they work up. But I'm not confident that I can just put that stuff over into the test and and find it right away because I've usually needed a few tries. You can, it's easy enough on one pair of skis, you can work back and forth and layer the stuff up and it builds fine and you're, you're testing the top layer usually. The best solution often is a couple applications of the same wax, just like with regular paraffin, where a couple applications of the same wax kind of can clear the signal and make it a little more pure, a little better response. But, um, but I, I feel like we could take one or maybe two pairs of skis and work through waxes really quickly. This stuff is so quick to put on. You're on the bench, you spin it on and it's, it's cool in minutes and then you use a horsehair brush and polish it out. Um, and it's, uh, it's really rapid to work with on site. So if you give it the time, I think you can get there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not automatic and it's not easy just to put it in with the other mm -hmm. waxes. It, it just, it's a little bit of a different mindset. As a system, I like it. As, as a component of a, of a different system. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't really plug in directly. So I think I've been talking to some customers and I think the, the questions out there are like, speed, is fluoro free gonna be faster than fluoros and durability? Good, very good questions. Speed is what? Is, are we talking about speed in a speed trap, or are we talking about speed around a course? Um, I think we're seeing that at, at high speed, low load, so half weight glide outs, fluoros are really hard to beat. In almost every condition, fluoros offer something else. Um, the difference is, the, well, the other thing that we see, I think, with the fluoro-free solutions is often that they get really, really close together in those circumstances. Once the speed gets up and the pressure is low, the, there's sort of a ceiling to the performance of the fluoro-free, and everything kind of collects under the ceiling, you know, and, and sort of call it a terminal velocity, right? At terminal velocity, they're all more or less the same. The question is, how do they get there? And where you see the bigger differences is under pressure when you're pushing on the ski and accelerating it. Uh, in general, I don't feel like the fluoro-free solutions are ever going to offer the level of performance that the fluorinated versions will. But I th don't think we're going to see race times drastically reduce. I think, I think we'll see solutions that, off that support the development of speed in active skiing, particularly in skating, at a very high level. And can well, long, wet, dirty... No way. No chance. Long, wet, dirty. Um, I mean, there, there are additives in some of these waxes that are really pretty hydrophobic, but not as hydrophobic. There are additives that are dirt resistant, but not as dirt resistant. I, I have hopes. Some of these things, Claude feels like they make a film that is pretty, you know, impermeable and impervious to water and dirt. And that's the whole promise of Floros. But... I don't know. I, I have to believe that 
the, you know, for dirty, wet marathons, floors are a really big advantage. Really big. This weekend will be interesting. We got two marathons in Crassberry. The temperatures aren't super high. Daytime highs are cresting freezing, but the nighttime temperatures are quite cold and stable. I think we're going to be into uh, really pleasant winter conditions, some level of transformation in the snow, overall fine grain, I expect. I need to check with Nick and see what, what's happening up there. But, I, I, you know, I think it'll be interesting. I think it's going to be fun races for floral free. I don't think it's going to be a bummer that we don't get to use florals because it's not going to be a death march. I think we can make fast skis. Uh, will they last the whole time? Well, we're going to go for a good long ski on Friday and try some stuff. Um, we'll see. I hope you have your testing legs. That makes me, yes. <laughs> that makes you happy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> long good. tests. A long test. It's good. Amy's in charge of durability testing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, if you have a coach that doesn't give very good feedback in your testing team, <laughs> You know if you're that person if you get sent out for a durability <laughs> test. <laughs> hey, can you test the durability of these two waxes? Take them for about 40K and then come back. <laughs> I'll miss the start. Oh, it's long-term testing. It's okay. Is that what you're saying I'm good for? No, you're very good at everything. Okay. Is that enough? Yep. Yeah.